Welcome to week 5, unit 5. In the previous unit, we discussed OData offline capabilities. In this unit, I will show you how to support your app with remote logging. Let's get started. Remote logging is a fundamental feature to keep your app operational. It's one of the main delivery aspects of mobile services to have a runtime environment that you can administrate and support. Remote logging is a part of this and it makes sure that your distributed mobile application is still alive and keeps alive. Remote logging collects the log information from the local devices and periodically uploads it to the server where either the developer or the administrator can do further analysis on this. Therefore, you need to implement it locally using our SDK and you administer the feature actually in the mobile services cockpit. Or you can also adjust the settings and the behavior of the service so that it um, works with your requirements. So here, this is the screenshot of the mobile client log upload settings. First, you can turn it on and off. I mean, that's the most basic functionality. In addition, you can set a filter on the log level that you want to allow to be uploaded to the server to restrict the amount of data that can be uploaded. Also very important that you do not store the log information from a couple of thousand devices uh, all over the time. So you need to restrict the date or the, the time period where you want to keep it on the server. You can also set limits on the application log size as well as on the maximum number of logs. On the right hand side you see that you can also specify log collection level settings. That means you can, for, for a particular user, that means for that user A or that user B, you can say you want to collect that log or not. After collecting the logs, you want to look at them and search with them. So here in the second tab of the mobile client log upload, you will see that you see the recent log information that has been collected. You see the usernames and the message text as well as the log level information. In that screen you have the option to filter for the log information and see, um, for instance, you can filter on show me all your error messages that you have collected recently. You can also download the log files and search for correlation IDs. Implementing them on the logging in the, on the client part is quite easy. You need to add the dependencies and initialize the logger in your code. Once you have done that, you can just use logging methods to collect the data locally and after a while, maybe at application startup, you want to upload the log to the server. The log files and the log messages should be clear, brief, but also complete so that on the server side, the administrators and developers have an understanding of what has been happening on the device. Also make sure that you have an understanding and do know what the log levels mean. For instance, here that the error is basically the smallest amount of information that you can log. It only happens when an actual error happens. Warn would be a little bit more collection and so it goes up to trace. One thing that is important is that you can attribute your HTTP calls with the so-called correlation ID. This is a unique number that is appended to your HTTP request that, that you send to the mobile services. With that, you can identify what happened with that request and which elements of mobile services has been touched and been used by this request. This helps you to identify root causes of issues that may appear in your application and during runtime. 
we do have some recommendations here. So for instance, debug and info should be used when to trace the current state of your application. And you can use this, these log messages all over, the all over your code. Warn should be used for errors and allow your application, errors that allow your application to function without any impacts on the user experience. When there's an error that would typically stop your application working, then you use the log message. So, when you have collected all these log messages, you can periodically upload that to mobile services, maybe at the program start or uh, on other events. But it's also good to provide a user interface that lets the user manually upload the log files. This could happen in an incident case where the user is being asked to upload the log right after the issue that appeared in his application. By providing the user a button to upload the log files, you have control about when the log files will be updated to limit it, the amount of data being collected further. This information screen, where the user has the ability to upload the log, can also be used to display other value information that is not necessarily important to your business logic, but to the operation of the application. Maybe you also want to show when, has the last, uh, when was the last time the user uploaded the local changes on the data or recent errors that has happened during um, the activities on the device. Let's do the demo and see how this all works together. So here we have our steps application. And I have added in the Gradle uh, file the dependencies to the foundation of the mobile services SDK, the Android SDK. And in the main activity Kotlin file, here we see that on the start, we want to upload the collected usage information. So what we do here is that we call the upload log method of our SDK to upload the data to the server. And this happens on the start of the application. Before we can do that, we need to initialize the logger, which happened here in the initialize logging usage and usage. This is being called earlier in the onCreate method. An important thing here is that you actually doing and using HTTP communication. This is being done using the OK HTTP client. This client needs to be initialized at the start of your application and it is being used during the whole runtime or the whole life cycle of your application to communicate with mobile services. What we also did here is we added an interceptor to the HTTP client that adds the correlation ID to each and every request that goes through the OK HTTP client. In order for the log upload to fully function, I need to add, again, refreshing the mobile services cockpit, I need to add the mobile services log upload feature to my application. In this example, I already did it. So in my steps application, I added the to, to the application the mobile client log upload. I enabled it and I set the log level, level to debug. If I disable it, no client will be able to upload any log files to the server. Let us start our application now. And while it's starting, let's make sure that we don't have a log file, a log, uploaded log file from, from the recent start of, your, of our application here. 
So we just basically at the moment see these two log entries which already have been uploaded in previous tries. I'm starting the application the very first time or uh, my summit session has been ended. So the application re recognizes that I need to refresh my summit session and brings the summit onboarding or um, authentication flow into the front. So I log on. Now I'm logged on and after application start, the logs should be appear on the mobile services cockpit. So let me refresh. Just go here, here, make sure it is. And filter, here we are. So let me just sort it the other way around. So we do see here that we have an error and the error is called log upload demo for OpenSAP. And that was exactly what we wanted to see on the server. This concludes unit five, supporting your app with remote logging. In the next unit, I will show you how to add usage analytics. Bye bye and see you there.